Hello everyone, today we're going to learn about Python virtual environments specifically for Mac and Linux users. Today we're going to be covering what a virtual environment is and why it matters, and then how to create, operate, and remove a virtual environment. Now I created slides for the first section. I feel like number two, three, and four all are best learned by actually seeing how to do these tasks through a terminal. So with that being said, if you already know what a uh, in a virtual environment is and why it's important, feel free to skip uh, about a minute ahead and uh, go directly to the commands. So with that out of the way, what is a virtual environment and why do we care? Well, a virtual environment simply enables you to manage programs with different dependencies. So Python includes this thing called pip, which is a robust packaging system to install and manage dependencies not part of the standard library. Now, you may have used pip before. So for instance, you can type pip install pandas, which will install pandas, which is a common data science library. Uh, the verdict is still out on what pip stands for, but it's likely pip installs packages or pip installs Python or the preferred installer program. But there's actually a pretty immense problem. <laughs> See what I did there um, with, with pip because it installs everything into your global environment. So let's think about this for a minute. What happens if we have two projects? You know, we just installed Pandas, but now we're working on another project that requires a different version of Pandas. Well, we're gonna run into a lot of headaches. So the good news is, is that virtual environments solve this challenge. Virtual environments or virtual ENVs or N for short, create an environment that's isolated, allowing us to keep each project's dependencies completely separate. So we create this thing called a virtual environment, and the only thing that goes in there are the stuff specifically for our project. And the great news is, as of Python version 3.3, there's nothing additional we need to do because virtual environments are built into the standard library. So with that being said, let's create a first virtual environment. And you can see here, here are the commands if you want to take a screenshot of this, um, you know, just that we're going to be covering today. So let's switch to the terminal. And the first thing we're going to do is create a Python virtual environment. So we can type which Python 3 to find out what environment we're in. You can see here that we're using this, here's a system path of Python 3, and you'll see why this become, becomes relevant in a minute. So let's type Python 3 dash M for module VENV. And then here we can type the name of our virtual environment. So we could do Leo's VENV, but it's actually conventional just to type VENV and make that the name of the virtual environment. Now, if we list the directory, we can see that now a VENV is created. Now, that's one thing I want to point out is that a virtual environment is simply a directory. There's no special magic that, you know, you know, or complexity around this. It's a directory that helps us manage, you know, the dependencies and the, the version of, you know, Python that we're running. So with that being said, now let's type which Python 3 again and you'll notice that we're still using the system version of Python or the global environment. So what we can do to activate Python is source, venv bin, activate. And you'll notice now that the environment name is prepended in our terminal. And now if we type which Python 3, we can see that now the path of which Python we're using is different. And Whenever we activate a virtual environment, Python 3 and pip3 are symlinked to pip and Python. So we can just type Python or pip from now on. So now what we can do is we can type pip list to see what's in our uh, virtual environment. And we notice we only have two packages here. So let's install. Actually, I'm first going to upgrade. We'll do Python module pip install upgrade pip. Then I'll just get rid of. Um, that message whenever we're typing commands, make things a little bit cleaner. Now we'll type pip install pandas. So this is gonna install pandas, numpy, and everything that pandas needs to run into our virtual environment. We can type pip list, and we can see now that we have a bunch of new packages in our environment. So those packages are now available to us whenever we're running you know, a Python program. Now, one thing that we might want to do is save these, you know, uh, save this environment. So 
whenever we're saving an environment, we don't copy over the directory or commit the virtual environment to GitHub because over time, uh, these environments can grow pretty pretty large. I mean, we could have hundreds or thousands of packages. There's no reason for us to just commit that to you know, a repository. So what we do instead is we export out the pip environment, all of the packages and the version number, and this is easy to do. We just type pip freeze, and then we type this, that's what that uh, character means, requirements.txt. And we could name this file anything we want. Again, this is conventional. We hit enter, and now we can cat the requirements. And we'll see that we have the exact versions of the packages that we added to our virtual environment without you know pip and setup tools because that's part of you know the the scaffolding so to speak of the virtual environment so now what do we want to do let's go ahead and figure out how to remove our virtual environment right i said previously it's just a directory so we can type remove force recursive env now one thing to keep in mind is whenever we create this virtual environment that's just for the virtual environment don't ever put your project files into a virtual environment because virtual environments are made to be disposable so let's remove that and you'll notice on the left here we still have our virtual environment name prepended that means if we try to type any Python commands, we're going to try to use that virtual environment that we just removed. We don't want to do that. We want to um, obviously, uh, we want to deactivate. De Oop, deactivate, I could spell. Okay, and then that'll deactivate our, um, you know, that our environment. So now we type which Python 3, we can see that we're back to using the global environment. So now we're still in our uh, YouTube project directory. We have one file called requirements.txt. How do we restore that virtual environment? Well, it's pretty simple. We do Python 3, M for module, VENV, and then we can, again, name our virtual environment whatever we want. But we'll use VENV because that's just conventional. Now we activate our virtual environment. We've already done this before. Source, VENV, bin, activate. Okay. Now that we are loaded into our virtual environment, we can do that. We can see that by typing which Python 3, which is the same as with Python. You know, again, they go to the same place. Now what we need to do is we type pip install dash r requirements. And this will install everything that we just, uh, you know, everything that was in our environment previously. And we can do pip list. And we can see now we've successfully, you know, recovered our virtual environment. So that requirements.txt file, again, that's what we're going to, you know, add to our, uh, you know, GitHub or GitLab repository. So that way we can recreate or our friends or uh, co-developers and recreate, um, you know, that virtual environment. So that's it. So as a new programmer, you know, you've learned everything that you need to know, at least initially about Python virtual environments. If you like this video, please uh, give me a thumbs up and I wish you the best luck on your Python journey. Thanks everyone.